Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we are going to be covering leet code number 13, Roman to integer. This is an easy difficulty problem so it shouldn't be super hard to get through. I'll start by reading the problem description. So Roman numerals are represented by seven different symbols I, V, X, L, C, D, and M. They have a little table here of values where there's a symbol with the value. So the I is worth one, the V is five, etc. So we're given a table of what the different value mappings are. And now it says, for example, two is written as two of the I's in a row, yes, and just two ones added together. 12 is written as XII, which is simply X, which is 10, plus the two that is two of the I's. The number 27 is written as XXVII, which is just two X's, two tens, plus one five, plus two of the ones. Roman numerals are usually written largest to smallest from left to right. However, the numeral for four is not four I's in a row. Instead, the number four is written as IV. Because there is a one before the five, we subtract it, making four. The same principle applies to the number nine, which is written as IX. And there are six instances where subtraction is used. An I can be placed before V and X to make four and nine. An X can be placed before L and C to make 40 and 90. And a C can be placed before D and M to make 400 and 900. And then the task is given a Roman numeral, convert it to an integer. So let's look at the examples here. Example one, we're given an input string S of three I's in a row. The output is three because that's just adding one, one, one together, that's three. The second example, the string we're given is IV. Well, we saw above that that's a special case where we do a subtraction, so that is actually four. And then we have another example, if the string is IX, that's another special case where the output is nine. And example four, LVIII. Well, this looks like one where we're actually just straight up adding things, so L is 50 plus five plus three ones is 58. And then the final example here is MCMXCIV. So I guess the M is 1000, but then we have a CM. So that's like 1000, but the C comes before it, which is smaller than it. So that's a minus 100. So it's 1000 and then the CM is 900, and then XC is 100, but minus the X, because there's a smaller thing before it, so that's actually 90. So that's 1,990, and then this last thing is IV. Well, we saw before that is a four, so that is four, so the, the output is 1994. So this is a, a one where there's several of those different special cases in there. There's one, two, three different special cases. So we're going to have to be able to handle strings that have all those weird special cases in there. And let's see the constraints. We're going to be given a string between the length of 1 and 15. So no empty string silliness will be going on. And the string s will only contain the characters from that table that we saw before. And it is also guaranteed that S is a valid no Roman numeral in the range from one to one less than 4,000, it looks like. So basically what we're being asked to do is just take this table and figure out what the mapping it needs to be from a string of these characters to whatever the actual integer representation of that will be. So let's pull over to the code editor and think about how we can code this up. Now, I actually prepared in advance 
a, a table that's essentially just a code version of the table they gave us because for a problem like this, we're pretty much by definition going to need to have a table to make those conversions in some form. So I'm just going to paste that in right away. So I have this Roman table here, which is basically just copied and pasted over from what they gave us. So this is just going to be a Python dictionary that is all of those mappings from the Roman numeral keys here to their actual values. So they told us that with a typical Roman numeral, the bigger values are on the left and the smaller values on the right. That's pretty similar to what we're used to with normal numbers. So if we take a Roman numeral like this, XII, well, you can think of this X part as kind of like the tens place and this part here as kind of like the ones place. And if we wanted to calculate what the total value of that would be, we could actually start from the far right hand side and then iterate through backwards, basically starting from the smallest numbers, seeing if we have any small things. So that would we add a one for that. We'd see that we'd add a one for that. And then we'd see the next thing we'd add a 10 for this one because it's bigger. And all we'd have to do is basically loop through the string we're given starting from this and going that way and simply adding in whatever the value of that next item is. And the only time that we'd have to do something different is if we see a value here that is smaller than the one next to it. So let's see a different example where that would be true. So I'll erase that. And let's say we were given just something very simple, IV. So if we were doing this one, we'd start counting. We'd say, okay, we saw five. So we'll add that to our number. But then if we look at our next thing, well, that is actually smaller than the thing we just looked at if we're coming this way. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna loop through basically in reverse order, adding the value every time, but we're also gonna have to make a check to see if what we're looking at is smaller than what we just saw. And if it is, we're actually going to have to subtract off this I instead of adding it. Because the only time we see a Roman numeral value like this after something that's bigger than it is when we do one of those subtractions. That's probably enough for us to be able to code up a solution. Basically what we're going to do is take the input string, loop through it backwards, add the value that we're looking at every time, but we're also gonna have a check to see if the value we're looking at is actually smaller than the one we just saw. And if it is, we have to subtract it instead of adding it. So we'll call this the reverse iteration solution. So we're going to have to keep track of a couple of values here. We're going to initialize a value num just to keep track of our number because we're going to be adding to it as we're looping through the string we're given. And we're also going to have a variable to keep track of the last thing we've seen because uh, doing this with indexing might be a bit troublesome. And especially when we're starting at the first index and we don't know if we're looking at an I or not necessarily. So all we have to do is initialize a variable last to I. So we'll just assume that we're starting with an I even if we're not, because we're only ever going to see things at least as small as that moving forward. So it won't be a problem that we start with an I there. And now all we're going to do is loop through the string backwards. So for numeral, in our string s, which is the input, but we're going to loop through it backwards. So let's do a reverse slice thing here. So that's looping through it backwards. So for numeral in our string, and now we want to say if, let's take our Roman table here, if the Roman table value of that numeral, so this is taking the numeral, which is a string, and then l passing it into our Roman table. So it's looking up the value for that string. So if that value is less than the value of the last thing we saw, that means we hit the special case that requires a subtraction. 
So we're just going to take care of that right away. So if that happens, it's the special case where subtraction comes. So we're going to take our target number and then minus equals. So subtract off just the value that we're looking at. So if it's smaller than the last thing we saw, we need to subtract it off. Else, if it's not smaller, we just do the normal case, which is we add. So num plus equals the thing that we're looking at. Look up in the table. And the last thing we need to do is just set our last to the thing we're looking at. So now that we loop through, the last thing we saw for the next iteration is what we just looked at. So last equals the numeral we just saw. This is going to loop through the whole string, doing all the necessary additions and subtractions to get the final answer. So then when we get out of this final loop, we just have to return our final number. Now this should be a working solution to this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit on this one. Now we have a problem. Syntax error return outside of function. Uh, oh, we we don't have the proper level of indentation, it looks like. So let's indent everything by one. And let's hit submit again. So if there's no further errors, we should have a working solution here. And we'll pull over. So we got a passing solution, 48 milliseconds, faster than 60% of other Python 3 submissions. This is one of those problems where there's probably not too many different faster ways to solve it. So this is probably similar to what everybody else is getting. Now what we did so far is probably a solution that's kind of the way you're quote unquote supposed to do this because we actually did go through and do all the necessary logic to use the Roman numerals the way they're actually made with the subtractions. But there are various ways you could do this problem without doing that by kind of replacing what the Roman numerals mean with kind of an easier string version. So I don't know what the Romans were thinking actually when they made their number system, having this weird subtracting rule instead of just having things that add toward the number you want. Like maybe they thought that by having the subtraction they were being clever, kind of saving characters because you know, uh, Roman numeral nine is only two characters versus if you just wrote a V with four I's after it, it would basically mean the same thing, but that's five characters instead of only two. So they probably just wanted to save space by having that subtraction, which allows them to get by with fewer characters for representing things like a nine. But it's kind of troublesome to think about numbers in terms of having to do those sorts of subtractions. And one way we could solve this problem is just getting rid of that system and replacing all instances where the subtractions occur with kind of the addition equivalent. So basically, instead of having something like a IX for a nine, we would just put V with four ones after it, which is basically the equivalent of a nine. So. So let's code up one more solution doing that kind of string conversion method, which basically gets rid of the weird Roman numeral counting and replaces it with what we might consider something that's kind of easier to think about. So let's make a new solution here. It's going to be called string conversion method. Now we're going to still need the Roman table from before, so that's fine. And I have prepared in advance a new table to do the conversions because typing this out during the video will be a little bit troublesome. So basically we have a new table here, let's spell it right, called convert, which is basically taking all of the special cases and mapping them to their equivalent that would just be additions instead of having to do the subtractions. So instead of IV for a four, we'll just have four I's. Instead of IX for a nine, we'll just have a five and then four ones, et cetera. So, and now if we take these and replace all occurrences of these in the input string with these things, then we'll be left with a string that we can just directly add all the values and not even have to think about the subtractions. So to do that, we're going to say for KV in convert.items, so for the key and the value, we're going to say s equals 
s.replace. So we're replacing any instances of each key with whatever the corresponding value is. So that's going to go through the string, replace all the fours that look like that with fours that look like this. And then after doing this, we just have to add up everything according to this original table and return it. So now we just need to return the sum of a list comprehension that's just looking up all the values in the table that we have in our string. So the lookups, again, were Roman table numeral. So let's copy that in here for our lookups. And so we'll do each of those lookups for each numeral in S. So all this is doing is saying for our string that now has all these conversions in it, we're going to, for each of those numerals, just look up the value in this table and return it into this list. Once we have all those values, sum them all up. And that should also be a working final solution for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit on this one as well. And as long as there is no errors in the code here, we should have had a passing solution and we'll pull over. So this time it actually ran a bit faster than the first solution. So we got 36 milliseconds faster than 97.49% of other Python 3 submissions doing this same problem. So this was a pretty easy problem, but I hope it gave you some insight into how you can use a dictionary mapping in order to get from certain values to other values. That's actually a very fundamental topic and skill to be able to do in programming. You're often having to look things up in something like a dictionary that has very fast lookups and try to convert it into some other corresponding value. That's something that you'll probably be doing all the time when you're doing programming. So despite this being a pretty easy problem, it reinforces something that you're probably going to use pretty often. So thanks for watching and keep coding.